my comment about current installation is not so much about what makes it work and what does not make it work, but really to talk about what I see as the obsolescence of the ethnographic museum. There is this dichotomy between to move from the area of India into this particular area is an incredible uh, tension of time uh, to move from the contemporary realm in which you know, the, 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 the display of the shopkeeper to the, uh, the display of sort of traditional class that I mean, you know, is part of the uh, Indonesian or the Papua New Guinea world seems to me uh, something very you know, uh, interesting to, to think about, that, which is the relationship of time and place in which these objects are positioned. And which for me, you know, goes to the latter issue is, is, the content, is the ethnographic museum capable of being contemporary? And if so, what form of contemporary will accompany um, the effects that it uses to, you know, um, not only uh, draw various problems into its realm, but also how it seeks to produce new forms of knowledge about the objects of study, about the subjects of study. It is the self-consciousness that drives the attempt to rethink the museum, and which is something that is very, very important. The need to remain constantly self-reflexive. And I think this is something that I take away from this current display that is very productive, and that self-reflexivity you know, provides an opportunity to grapple with the relationship between the contemporary world, as it were, and the historical you know, subject that has been, you know, that has been the, you know, the province of the ethnographic museum, how the subject of the exhibition display has been incorporated into the work of contemporary arts. And I wonder how the ethnographic museum can bridge that relationship that bridge that relationship to produce new forms of knowledge about the present. One of the successes of the Tropen Museum is the knowledge that it is itself an artifact and it's a site of representation. Um, and I think if you go through the galleries, you have the sense of an evolving series of techniques, which as a museum curator, I find quite interesting. Particularly, I would say the use of audiovisual um, techniques. Uh, the fact that in certain of the galleries in Africa, for instance, the audiovisual material is put inside a case, it becomes an object itself. Uh, in other galleries, it's the way of situating the visitor um, in, or contextualizing the visitor. What I like about the Tropen Museum is, in a sense, their courage to experiment with a whole series of mise en scène, uh, the ways in which you embed a visitor in a cultural context. Some are successful, some are less successful. I think the ones that are successful um, are the ones that are more about, uh, I suppose, Dutch sense of their own history. We are all working with a canon, and we're, a lot of us work with the collections that we have, and it would seem to me always a disappointment to ignore the historical collections that we have in favor of the contemporary, which sometimes says the things that, don't, that we want to say, as opposed to the objects that we have that often don't. What the Tropen Museum, of course, is, is it's made history in, in a very real way, um, and it understands that the making of history is something that it continues to do, that in a sense, as an artifact, it's not only about representation, but it's about cultural production. I'm very pleased that the old notion that societies which were dubbed as ethnic groups whose sole cultural merit was that they were frozen in the past and that their tradition-based authenticity was the main feature to qualify them to become collectibles in the Western Museum has been largely broken at the Tropen Museum. This is done mainly by inclusion of the contemporary and uh, the popular which was considered unauthentic and contaminated by civilization until recently in, uh, in the museum parlance. This is the prime uh, marker of change. This new approach in principle does make the museum post-colonial, forward-looking and reflector of change that is occurring in non-Western societies. 
looking at the popular culture component in the Indian section, I get the feeling as if this component has been loosely appended as an afterthought or a correction in the form of a footnote, as if there is a jump from centuries-old traditions of production and consumption of artifacts and images into mass-produced culture, mass-produced popular culture of the modern urban streets of India. The second point that I wish to comment upon pertains to the notion of contemporary. If the ethnographic museums concern themselves with all aspects of culture of the society they represent, can they leave out uh, the art of that society to be taken care of by the art museum? Can we separate art museum from artifact? Even if one has to agree for a while that contemporary global art is a world by itself, its galleries and museums, its markets and publicity, its antecedents and critical principles, and therefore could be dealt with as a separate category by the art museums, the question still remains as to what happened to the art of the ethnic groups after the decline of their tradition-based production of artifacts. It's a challenging thought how the museum would look like, the, I mean of course the, the collection would look like if you would build it around themes instead of, um, instead of regions where you then have more intercultural comparison as your leading uh, rationale. There's a danger, I suppose. Uh, when I worked at the British Museum, we used to work with someone who said that one of the problems is that you end up with multicultural soup. Namely, that you end up with something that operates at such a level of generality that it's all about the family of man. And I suppose, in a way, there are reasons for doing that. But it seems to me that entirely structuring a museum around areas of commonality isn't really going to give you a sense of kind of human diversity or the relationship to subjectivities that I think most people would want these days, that your audience is probably much more interested in. The question is, what can the ethnographic museum learn from all these other disciplines that I think that ethnography has to be, in my view, necessarily interdisciplinary? in terms of the ways in which it uses the objects, in terms of the kind of narratives and the stories it tells with the object. I would rather sort of, you know, work on more micro, you know, microcosmic, smaller, you know, uh, exhibitions rather than say this is India. I would rather pick a subject, maybe not a theme, but a subject that in which, you know, the museum can convey the richness of the imagination behind those particular objects. If you look at the exhibition, on the contemporary, you know, popular urban culture. Uh, and then you look at the ceremonies from the beginning. Uh, those are two different worlds without any much connection. And here it is representing Africa. So what we see basically, I think there, I think there's need to connect. Uh, there's too much of, you know, the exotic, the ceremonial, uh, the ritual, and then the chaos. I wonder if there's not one big area lacking and which is European cultures. This whole issue between what you collect, you know, do you collect the vernacular, do you collect the high art, do you collect the popular culture, do you collect the visual culture, and so one gets terribly confused when it comes to one's own culture in a way that one isn't so because of the, the lack of distance. The notion of connections and how these things are deeply linked and linked, in a sense, through the vehicle of one place. The important thing is how it's connected. And I think that is actually a much more interesting ethnographic trope. The movement of culture and material and people, I think is actually something that speaks quite fully to a contemporary audience. I don't want to, uh, to be nasty, but you have to start all over again, because a new era is, is, already, uh, is already starting. And I don't mean that what, it, what is there um, is, uh, is, isn't very, very successful, but in the dynamics of time, we need to rethink whatever we are doing all the time. I think it's time to uh, have a drink and toast on the accomplishment of uh, the museum. Thank you very much.